Have you watched Father's Day, a Kurt Franklin story here on YouTube? Oh my God, in just three days of it being published, it had over 1 million views. That tells you how good it is. And of course, you know, I had to come on here and break things down from a licensed therapist perspective. So stay tuned because I got five things that I want to share with you starting now. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hey, but if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my videos go. My name is Keandra Jackson, licensed marriage and family therapist, award-winning speaker, best-selling author, media personality, named as Forbes Next 1000, and Beyonce in the NAACP has recognized my work, my name, and my business. Now, I'm not here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about this show that I just watched last night called Father's Day, A Kurt Franklin Story. I was not ready. If you have not watched it, you already know there's gonna be spoiler alerts in, up, through, and around in here. So press pause, <laughs> go on over to Kurt Franklin's YouTube channel, watch the full thing. It's only about 30, 35 minutes long, and then spin the block and come back and chat with me in the comments because you know we got stuff to talk about. So before we move on, I need for you to comment below. Let me know what your thoughts were about this whole entire thing because I had so many mixed feelings from a psychological perspective because y'all know I'm a therapist, but also too from a completely different spiritual perspective. And I was like, okay, I'm, I, I honestly wasn't going to do a video about this. I was like, this is a good thing to do a video about, but I'm tired. I ain't got time to record. But then I woke up this morning and was like, Ooh, this was on my spirit. So let me go ahead and drop the five things that I want to talk to you guys about in regards to Kirk Franklin's life and his story essentially. So to be very clear, I'm going to be breaking things down from a licensed therapist perspective with some psychology, but I'm also going to be bringing some spiritual concepts to this as well, because you guys also know that I'm a believer. Before I even get into the breaking down of these things, I just wanted to share and say that I am so appreciative of Kurt Franklin being so vulnerable and to share some of the most intimate details, the intimate life occurrences and events that happened in his life just recently. He did not not have to share this. He did not have to share it with the world, but he chose to. And it just reminded me of how vulnerable and how open he has been essentially like his whole career. Remember when he was on Oprah back in like 2005, talking about his pornography addiction and some of the marital issues that him and his wife was having. He also shared about the issue when he fell off the stage and all of those things years ago and how it impacted him medically. I feel like he's always been transparent and open about his upbringing and his adoption story. And also more recently, there's been a lot of news going around about what happened between him and his son and the whole issue of how it was publicly displayed. So I honestly feel like Kirk has been open and pretty transparent about the things that are going on in his life. And I honestly appreciate that, especially because he doesn't have to, but also because he's someone in the limelight and there are already so many eyes and perspectives and lies and so many things that can happen when you put your personal business out there. So I'm just thankful that he chose to share a piece of his story because I do believe that what he shared has the capacity to help others heal. So let's get into the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about, which is broken people make some of the best things. Now, I don't know if y'all realize this, but I promise you, some of the people who have been through the most difficult things in their life, they create the best music, they create the best TV shows, they write the best books. Even, you know, how Mary J. Blige, where she was going through her breakups back in the day, and we love that type of music. When people are going through something, it's like they get just way more creative, and it just really resonates with people. I think that's why Kurt Franklin and his music tends to really reach a lot of people. And can we please stop thinking that Christians, believers, and men, women of God, just because we believe in God and serve Jesus, that we don't go through stuff, that we don't have issues, that we don't have difficulties and hardships. Sometimes we be the ones going through the most. And so even though Kurt Franklin happens to be in the limelight and considered a celebrity, especially in the gospel arena, and also has transcended over to mainstream in some capacities as well, that does not mean we do not go through things. That that does not mean we are exempt from life circumstances and issues. So if you're looking at his story and you're like, well, how could he go through that? And how and how and when? Well, honey, let me tell you, if we peel back the layers on your life, <laughs> what will we find? So to be honest and transparent with you, I would just say, don't judge. Don't judge people because you just never know 
what they are going through currently, what they have been through in their past and growing up and what they may even go through in the future. So learn to pump your brakes, hold your judgment and make sure to just handle people with as much grace and love as you possibly can. The second thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is daddy issues. And trust and believe, we are gonna talk about mommy issues next because woo hoo woo woo. So in regards to this, Kurt Franklin has some major daddy issues and rightfully so, because think about not knowing who your biological father is for 53 years for 53 years and also thinking that the man who was your father actually turned out not to be your father because your mom was lying and now he's deceased and no longer with us and so all of this is just bringing up so many different emotions and so many different forms of abandonment that we can't even pinpoint and i think it's interesting because a lot of times we talk about you know issues that moms and dads do and how they traumatize their kids and all of these things. And so I want us to understand that there are some parents, let's be real, that are completely trash, they're toxic, <laughs> they're abusive, they're all of those things. And then there's also a level of parenting that happens where parents might make mistakes, they may do things wrong, they may not intentionally try to hurt you, but they do still, right? Their actions, their behavior, or a lack thereof still leaves a lasting imprint on you, which causes some type of trauma. And to be honest, Kirk had this deep, very deep daddy wound that needed to be healed. And a lot of us got daddy issues. A lot of us are walking around with daddy wounds. And to be honest with you, our natural perception of how our father is or was or treated us oftentimes colors how we see our heavenly father. So if your earthly father was raggedy, not there for you, never showed up, never kept his word, sometimes we project those very things onto God and we have a hard time grasping and understanding, well, is God gonna show up for me? Is he present? Does he love me? Because my earthly father wasn't the best and didn't do those things. So what makes me think that a heavenly father whom I can't actually see would love me in that type of way? And so sometimes our earthly perception of our father impacts how we see our heavenly father, which can create a very interesting relationship that you have with God if it's not resolved in a healthy way. So Rick, he was calling him Mr. Rick. He couldn't even call him daddy just yet. But Mr. Rick seemed like he was what Kirk needed in the very moment that he revealed to him that he was his father. Rick was so nice, so kind, so welcoming, so vulnerable, so open, so gentle. And I was like, I'm so glad that Kirk was able to receive that from a father figure. Because if Rick was mean and nasty and disrespectful and did not, and all of those things, that just would have made that daddy wound that he had so much deeper. So I am so glad that Rick was mature enough to be able to handle the situation. And I know that this was a massive wound for Kirk being able to find out who his biological father is after 53 years. But also, can you imagine it for Rick going through your whole entire life, not knowing you have a kid, even though we don't know if he has, you know, other children, finding out now that you have a 53 year old son. So it's a woe for Rick and a double woe for Kirk. So both parties are experiencing some type of issues here. And it's so imperative that time is an important factor in this. I love how Rick was like, you take your time. This is about you. We're not gonna rush this relationship. Whoever you want to bring into my world and introduce me to, I will do so, And but we will go at your pace and your speed. Oh, that was so beautiful. And it was exactly what Kirk needed to help start healing the daddy wounds that essentially his mama impressed upon him. And while we're talking about mommy, can we please talk about Kirk's mom? Now, I'm not here to typically talk about nobody's mama, but she frustrated me, absolutely frustrated me while watching this. And to be honest, I would argue anybody down to the ground that sometimes mommy issues and mommy wounds are way more deeper and more intense and probably more frequent than daddy issues and daddy wounds. Can you imagine you spent nine months typically 
with your mom in her womb, right? You got to know each other intimately. We don't think about pregnancy like this a lot of the times, but everything your mom felt, you felt while in utero. Everything she ate, you ate. Every emotion, good, bad, or in between, you also felt. So this is probably one of the most intimate things that anybody can experience. And so can you imagine being rejected by the very person that gave you life? That's something that's very hard to come back from. That's something that impacts every single aspect of your life. So now you grew up without a mama and a daddy, and now you have two issues that are billowing on top of each other. Most of us got one or the other, right? Like our daddy may have been raggedy, but our mama was good. Our mama may have been raggedy, but our daddy was good. But Kirk had both and, as I like to say. So can you imagine the compounded issues that he experienced in his life that just really billowed over to his marriage, to his relationship with his children, his business, all of these things to act like this did not impact other areas of his life would absolutely be a lie. The part that tripped me out the most about this whole experience, and we could have talked about so many things, this video could have been hours long, but to be honest with you was when Kirk's mom denied the DNA. The DNA doesn't lie, boo especially when y'all took it for the second time and you requested to be present when the swabbing was taking place. And so now the results came back 99.99999. And now you're sitting in front of Kirk in his very face, denying the fact that Rick is his father when the test results are right there in front of you. Even if she didn't remember, because this was 53 years ago, she could have easily said, you know what, son? I don't remember all of the details, but I'm so sorry. I thought so-and-so was your biological father. I didn't know I was out here in these streets or whatever the circumstance was, but she couldn't even take responsibility for her own actions. She couldn't even say sorry. She couldn't even be honest enough to even say, okay, this is the moment that can change everything and help me reconcile here with my son after, I don't know, 20 plus years. And she couldn't even do that. She was crying and talking about, I've been waiting for this moment to reconcile with you and to be with you. No, you weren't. Because if you were, you would have been honest. You would have been truthful. And so now Kirk had to make the definitive decision. Even though he did not say this, he absolutely made the decision to set the boundary and probably say that he would never ever probably have a relationship with her ever again moving forward. And he even told her like, this is the defining moment. I need this from you. If you can't give me this, I'm gonna have to chuck up the deuces on you, right? Essentially is what he said. And she couldn't, she couldn't do it. That obviously speaks to some deeper issues that his mom has that she needs to work out. And also the aunt too, which I'm not even gonna get into in this video. But it broke my heart to see her forfeit the relationship that she could have potentially had with her son her grandchildren, her daughter-in-law, right? She could have actually been set up nice financially. You know, like th this could have been a completely different situation, but because she couldn't take ownership of her own actions, this just put a rip in everything. This is why I talk so heavily about setting boundaries, especially when you have to set boundaries with a family member, with a mother or a father, or, you know, someone that is a major figure in your life. In my book, Hard Work or Harmony, I talk in break down how boundaries are so important. And sometimes we find ourselves being in a situation where we need to figure out if this is a difficult season or is this a dead end relationship? I'm gonna say that again for the people in the back. In my book, Hard Work or Harmony, I have a chapter talking about, is this relationship in a difficult season or is it a dead end? And to be honest, even though this was his mom, I can see that this relationship was completely at a dead end. There was no difficult season at all that could be recovered here. Now, because there's grace and mercy and forgiveness, <laughs> who knows what the future may hold and how God may reconcile them, but I don't see that happening until she takes full responsibility of her action. The fourth thing that I want to talk to you guys about is what we will call the triplets, which is shame, guilt, and regret. Now I got this whole triplet situation from someone that I recently did in one of my speaker coaching calls, Kelly Lewis, and she coined them the triplets. And I was like, this is so good. And it applies so much to the Kirk Franklin story because we know those things often go hand in hand, right? We understand that guilt is feeling bad or sorrowful about something that you did in regards to a behavior. But we also know that shame is 
feeling like you're a bad person, not being able to separate you being a person from the action that you did. So you think that whatever you did or did not do in some cases, now you're taking on that level of shame, which goes into now kind of being a part of your identity. And then we have regret, which is basically sadness, sorrow, or disappointment of something that you did or something that you did not do. For example, like a missed opportunity or something of that nature. And this triplet and this trio, it became real manifest when Kirk said, I am probably one of the biggest, you know, gospel sensations out there. I've won Grammys and awards and showed up and I got the money and all of the things, but I still walk into a room and I'm still the most insecure man there. I was like, ooh, this is how deep this thing goes. You can have all of the accolades, all of the things, but if something is unresolved on the inside of you, that thing will rear its ugly head every single time. And it may even prevent you from having the things that you're really supposed to have or preventing you from getting to your next goal in life. So when we so when we look at this thing, essentially what Kirk is dealing with is rejection. You know, he literally is dealing with an orphan spirit. This is where the spiritual part, the, this is where it comes, the orphan spirit, right? Because once we become believers, we are essentially adopted into the body of Christ and we are new creations. And so we have to take off, quote unquote, the old man and everything that we've been through and understand that we have been brought with the price, that we have been covered in the blood, that old things are gone and passed away. Behold, I make all things new. You have to believe the fact that you are healed, that you are whole, that you are set free, that your sins are forgiven. All of those things in order to fully embrace what God has for you. And rejection is one of those things that will have you in a chokehold, honey. Like it is a stronghold for real. So hopefully Kirk not only goes through the process of releasing that and letting that go and coming out of agreement with it so he can fully heal. And the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about, the fifth thing is that one incident can impact generations. This is the one for me, okay? You can say generational cycles, generational patterns, or you can even say generational curses because that's what we use in the church house, okay? Whatever terminology you want to use, please understand that there are certain things that they can do, that they can indulge in, that they can participate in that has lasting impacts for generations and generations to come. Sometimes people open spiritual doors, knowingly and unknowingly, right? And they're dealing with things and because they opened the door and they don't close them or know how to close them, or didn't even know if they were open to begin with, now the next generation has to deal with that and the generation after that. And this is how you see things like, you know, poor communication and divorce and negative patterns and substance abuse and things of that nature is because it's just been passed down in your bloodline from generation to generation. And this is where we have and need what we will call generational curse breakers. People who are saying, okay, no, 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 no more. You cannot come up in here. You cannot do this with my family. The buck stops here. Absolutely not. The next generations to come will be free, will be made whole, will be able to do all of the things that I was not able to do. And so them showing Kirk and his son reconciling, even though the initial, the initial interaction was a little rocky, his son saying, all I wanted dad was you and to know my grandpa. Whew. <laughs> Again, I've been saying, Whew, a lot in this video, but wow, can you imagine a son being like, I just want my dad and I just also want to know my grandpa and how that healed him, which also probably will heal the next few generations. And it made me think about how if Kirk didn't have the best example of a father or a father at all, he probably didn't get the necessary tools that he needed to be a good father to his own son. And so that now that they are slowly reconciling and getting back on one accord, this is also going to break those generational patterns and cycles and curses that probably have been infiltrating their family for decades and decades. So this is the power of healing. This is the power of Jesus and therapy. Because I know Kirk talked about going to therapy, which I'm so glad he did and that he's probably his therapist's longest patient ever. But Jesus and therapy go both hand in hand. To think it's, oh, pray it away and no therapy or it's just all therapy. and You don't need prayer, honey. You are fooling yourself. Get both, okay? Because there's power and effectiveness in both. So the healing that is taking place between an in Kirk as an individual, in his son,
son as an individual, Mr. Rick as an individual. I don't know if Kirk's mama got healing, but even thinking about their familial healing that, that's going to transpire, it's going to impact them spiritually. The healing is going to go forth mentally, emotionally, relationally, and beyond. So my final thoughts on this is just, whoa. Um, again, whoa, because there was so much that I could have talked about in this video and broke down for you guys. But in order for this video not to be a million years long, I just want to personally thank Kirk, thank his family, thank his team for sharing this vulnerable moment with all of us. I was literally in tears watching this story because I know that it is going to help so many other people who have mommy issues and daddy wounds and not being reconciled to their children and marital issues and new people coming into their life. And there's adoption stories. There's so many elements of this thing that can be truly healing. And so I want to leave with this final scripture, which is Revelations 12 and 11. And it says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found something in it useful. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification button to stay connected of all the weekly videos that I have coming your way. And I'll see you next time. Bye.